Rick does call the case. People say Michigan versus Isaiah Williams. Council, please state your appearance for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Daniel Bennett, Attorney General, on behalf of the people. Alex Peterson, on behalf of the people. And good morning, Your Honor. Danny, I'm on behalf of Mr. Williams. However, as the court is aware, Mr. Williams wishes to represent himself, so I am merely standby counsel for Mr. Williams this morning. Well, I don't know that I did. I am prepared to proceed, Your Honor. I am prepared. I just know that Mr. Williams was found competent and he is adamant about representing himself, so I am prepared to assist him in terms of being prepared to proceed, Your Honor. I want to be clear about that. I just don't want to offend Mr. Williams' desire to speak for himself. That's all. Mr. Williams? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Williams, I wish to represent myself. I feel as though the Holy Spirit has directed me to stand, and so I wish to stand. I understand, I think, that part. You are sure that you want to represent yourself? I am confident that you are. All right. You understand, Mr. Williams, that you are facing charges that could amount to life in prison. I'm fully aware of that, Your Honor. All right. You understand also, sir, that there's great concern about difficulty in potentially representing yourself that you may have, because I would make you abide by all of the procedures and rules of the court, and I would show you no deference. You would have to know those rules and abide by those rules the same as the people. You understand that? Yes, I do, Your Honor, and I'm definitely fully aware, and that's why I stand, because the Holy Spirit has inspired me, you understand, that God said, for me to stand. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, it's for me to take a stand before this court. The accusation that's been brought against me, it required me to take and give an answer. I don't think no one else can, and I'm just asking the court to give an answer. Well, but Mr. Williams, you understand that Ms. Woodson would not be answering. She'd be consulting with you, but making sure that anything that you want done is done in an appropriate fashion before the court. You understand that that's her role, and to advise you as to how you should proceed in the case. As I said, Your Honor, I believe that for me to take a stand, and I would have to take and be willing to whatever the court has demanded me to do. I'm fully aware of the courts, and what I've been given there, as a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit has said to me this morning, that it is for me to abide by the court. You have been appointed by God to represent the law, and I'm here to take a stand and represent me as the person accused of the law, and that I think it is required for me to answer any questions that the court has in regards to this matter. And I don't think that Ms. Attorney Wilson or anyone else can speak on my behalf other than myself. Okay, but do you understand what this proceeding is? I thought it was going to be a hearing that I've been asking for for a year. Okay. This is what he finally has come to, who to finally present me with a hearing. Okay, but do you... For a year. But do you know what this hearing is about? Well, it is my understanding that they had a witness that they were bringing forth... No, 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 no. No, no, hold on. There are going to be a number of witnesses. Oh, good, because I counted the witnesses that I had that the prosecutor had brought against me was over 87 witnesses. And I hope that all 87 witnesses are here because I wish to take a cross examination. Okay, Mr. Williams, you understand that this is not the trial in the case if it gets bound over to circuit court. That is my understanding, yes, Your Honor. Okay, what do you understand is going to happen today? Well, I hope that the court would have been presented with grounds to fill the dole that the charges against... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mr. Williams, hold on, hold on. 
maybe I ask my question inartfully. What do you think comes can come out of this proceeding? To determine whether or not as the court have enough grounds to take the whole wheel for trial. Okay. And you understand how that occurs? I hope that because you will rejudicate this matter, then we bring this around. And you understand that if you decide that you you understand you would have a right to cross-examine the witnesses. Yes, I hope that that would be permissible. All right. And you understand that the standard is not beyond a reasonable doubt in this case. You understand that, sir? Uh, Well, what do you believe that the standard this court's going to apply to the evidence that the people are going to offer? What standard of proof? I was think and don't quote me, but I believe that it would be that it has shown to the court that what is represented is to show that. The claim of death has been shown, and that I am the perpetrator of the death. And you feel as though that enough has been presented here before this court to claim that that has been done. Now, if I'm incorrect, please correct me, please. Well, you understand, sir, that I am not here to offer you any legal advice. That's one of the reasons that you were appointed an attorney. So yeah. that if you don't understand something, it won't be up to me to educate you as to that. Oh, uh, excuse me if I gave that impression that I was looking for you to do that. No, I was only asking that you provide what you've been appointed for. That's all I'm asking from you. I didn't think that I was asking it from you. Now, if I maybe need to reiterate what I was saying to make it more plain, that I'm willing to understand you're taking a deal here, whatever you do, as being acceptable in the court because you have been put in that position. And the Holy Spirit tells me you've been appointed by God, so I know you're going to do God's will. I claim that. Now, I'm not going to ask you to take and give me the law or teach me. I'm just asking you to take and do what you feel is yes. And I'm going to stand here and listen. And okay, well, Mr. 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 Williams, in listening to you, what if I felt that the just thing to do would be to make sure that you had an attorney representing you? What would you say to that? And that you get every opportunity to consult with Ms. Woodson to make sure that all of the questions that you want asked are asked. What if I said that was the just thing to do? What would you say to that? I was taking that under consideration, and as I stated, I don't believe you would want to go against God's will. Because I believe you to be a man of God because you're supported by God. Now, if God wants me to stand as my own attorney, I'm quite sure you would not go against God's will and tell me that you don't want me to stand as my own attorney. That's how I stand. But what if I felt the just thing to do in this case would be to have you be represented by Miss Woodson? Then I would say that you're going to get God's will. I see. And Mr. Williams, you really feel that you can represent yourself? No. God didn't tell me I'm going to represent myself. God told me to stand, and he said the Holy Spirit will give me the word to take it stay before the court. So I stand. All right, but... Mr. Williams, you understand that you're asking me to allow you to represent yourself, not just stand, but to represent yourself. 
Yes, I put it in my neck. Okay, but you just told me that you were told not to represent yourself. No, I don't think I was saying that. I said that the Holy Spirit, when I was involved, would give me the word to say to address the court. Now, that is my desire to take it to the will of God. And I feel as though that God is capable of entering the court and addressing the court in the manner it should be addressed. I don't have no doubt in my power of my Heavenly Father. And he has already understand that we know that he's kind of capable of just doing what I need to be done. So I don't have any fear. Not at all. And I don't think you would have any fear toward God's power. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, that I, I don't have any fear of his power. What I do have fear of is, is that you're not clear on how to represent yourself before a court. And that in that because of that, that you won't get a just hearing. Because that's my job. My job is to make sure that the hearing is a just hearing and a fair hearing. And that you understand what you're doing. And I'm unclear right now as to whether or not you fully appreciate that. Yeah. I could take it and make it a little more plain that I'm not making you feel comfortable. And well, I don't. And represent it at the very me. I'm not saying that I'm going to take it, come forward, and say that I'm going to be standing here mute, waiting for the spirit to speak. No, I'm here as a voice to take and iterate what the spirit gives me to say. And I will be challenging every day that I feel as though the court is going against the law that was given by Moses and Jesus Christ, his grace to take it what represents, you understand, the derogation of that law. So I'm only, you understand, here standing here saying that I don't have any problem and I'm not feeling as though that I'm confident or incompetent. I'm feeling as though that all I need to do is have you feel comfortable to know that. I don't need Attorney Wilson because I wouldn't be happy with her because I'm going to give me, maybe I should explain to you why we want to have Attorney Wilson. And I, excuse me, let me speak to the court, please. I asked Ms. Wilson for a copy of the motion for discovery. I felt as though it was paramount in my case for murder that I have a copy of the most of us The motion. No, 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 Mr. Wilson. That's going to be part of our problem here, because this is my court. Oh, excuse me. Oh, forgive me. Yes. Forgive me. I will this time. So, are you telling me that you don't have discovery? No, I've been here, been begging for it. Your Honor, may I address that? The law is clear. It's by and through his attorney. Right. January 24th, 2022, his first attorney had every bit of discovery. By and through his attorney, he has this discovery. Thank you. Your Honor, I can speak behind her. She took a statement before the court. The prosecuting attorney stated, you know, in the last time I was here on March 23rd. Oh, we gave him the motion for discovery. We gave him the police report. Your Honor. You okay, know but, but Mr. Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams, you're using words, and that's what troubles me. You're saying a motion for discovery. Yes. Are you talking about the motion for discovery, or are you talking about the actual discovery? The motion for discovery has a requirement for the court to present to the defense attorney to prepare their case. And this has not been done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. Stop for a moment. You started to address me saying you asked for the motion for discovery. Yes. So are you asking for the motion for discovery or were you asking for the discovery itself? 
And do you understand the difference? Well, now, there, there, you have to clarify that because I'm no, I don't. The most I, th that's the problem, Mr. Williams. I don't have to clarify that. Oh, you okay. have to make your argument to me. Okay. You started your argument just now about the motion for discovery. Yes. I'm telling you there's a difference between the two. Okay. And so I'm wondering which one you're talking about. Oh, well, that means. No, no, no. I don't need to see any papers. I no, need no, to no, know no, which one. Just no, yes, listen to me. That. Which one are you talking about? I believe it's the United States Supreme Court does have rules for 12. Motion for discovery. That's why I was looking here to make sure I'm correcting the statute for the motion for discovery. And I was going to look here in regards to what it states. And it states here what she stated. The prosecutor attorney stated in October, I mean, what that, March 23rd, that we give him part of it, we give him the police report. But that's first thing it states, the first step is the first sentence states, motion for discovery. It's what? It takes the state, and it would be better than what? The names of the witnesses against the prosecutor. The prosecutor is a witness against defendant that he may have had time to address the matter before the court. And I'm here trying to take a deal here, but they got me all tied up here with this and him. Probably I guess they think I'm gonna run away or something or so they feel that I must be bound now like a, a threat to the court. So let's get back and reach in here and find that uh, motion for discovery. And what it said, because I, I don't want to take and uh, be here before the court and wasting your time. Well, uh, too late. And I'm next. Yeah. Well, Mr. Williams, look for that briefly approach. Please. Can I have white noise, please? Yes, sir. This is the first. Paragraph of the state here, the name and last and on the address of persons whom the state intends to call. What are you reading? Together from? with the relevant written and records, statement, moral, it says there, and containing, you understand, substantially reverberating, you understand, reports and their war statements, and a list, you understand. Oh, and I don't want, this is basically what it just, he was asking me, what am I talking about? And I'm saying, this is what I read, and it says here, to allow the district attorney to actually address the court. And this is what they have not been wanting to congratulate. And I went here, not once, not twice, but three times, so I provided the, uh, to the court and to the prosecutor asking for a motion for this government. I've asked, not this attorney, but even attorney, you understand, they did get it before. And every one of them say, I got it. I got the police report. I don't need nothing now. Now, I know I'm illiterate. And I stand, you understand, gladly being illiterate. But I'm not going to sit here and tell me you want somebody to represent me and don't feel as though they don't need a motion for discovery to know everything, you know what I'm saying? The, the, they require. Sir, I don't Mr. Williams, them, sir. Mr. Williams, as I'm to understand, the motion for discovery, to the extent there was one, already has been done. The discovery has been provided. So I'm not sure what you're talking about at this point. Would you like for me to give this a hint to the just me, please? What what are you trying to hand to me? The motion for discovery. There already has been the motion for discovery. It's already been provided. This has been provided to you, and they have given that to, to, to the defense. They've given the discovery to the defense. Everything that requires in the motion for discovery, they've given it to the defense. 
that they have, that everything is required. They've given it. Oh, I guess then I must be in another world somewhere because I'm not here yeah. for you because I don't know. I don't have it. They keep telling me I have a copy of it. Well, here's the chicken and please tell them to give me a copy of this if they have already given me everything to me. So, Mr. Williams, how are you going to represent yourself? At my own council place. No. How are you going to represent yourself? If you're saying that you don't have the discovery, which I understand, certainly from Mr. Feaster, who was before Ms. Woodson, that you had been provided. And, and I said to the court, and I tell the court, that is not adequate. It's not what the law required. And that you, the judge, you are bound to what? Support the law. And, I am. And I'm asking you, do you feel as though they have given me? Sir, I don't, I don't know what they've necessarily given you. I'm not supposed to know. And I'm, well, then that's why I'm explaining to you they have not. They have not given me what the court required. Okay. Not according to the rules and regulations of the law. All right. Sir? Anything else you want to say to the court before I rule? That's all I have to say then. Thank you. Ms. Wood, Ms. Woodson, anything you want to say to the court regarding this? Um, no, Your Honor. I leave it to the court's discretion. Uh, I think that Mr. Williams has made enough of a record for the court to make a very just and wise decision. Anything else in the people? I think you've made a, a record under people v. Russell that you know, we have to inquire as whether this, this request is unequivocal, knowing, voluntary, intelligent. Um, I think you've asked the questions. I, I don't know if the answers rise up necessarily, but I'll leave that to the court's discretion. However, under people v. Daniels and MRE 611A, I believe it is, there are certain witnesses that will be called that Mr. Uh, Williams is just not entitled to cross-examine himself. We have to cross-examine him. Through counsel, specifically Denise Fraser, Fraser Daniel, uh, Mary Leslie Bryant, Elizabeth Reese. Uh, these are all uh, other tax victims, and one is the mother of the chief victim in this case. There are allegations and evidence that will be coming in of domestic violence, physical violence, and sexual violence. And under the case law, he is not entitled to question those victims. And so I'd ask if the court ultimately lets him reference, represent himself at this stage, that he be not allowed to question those witnesses um, specifically. Do you understand that part, Mr. Williams? I understand what the prosecutor has said, and I can understand the prosecutor's actions because they probably understand too, uh, already understand that I have protected them because I filed. Actually, okay. the Mr. Williams, listen closely to my question. Yes. Do you understand that there would be witnesses that the people would put on that if you are to represent yourself, you could not, nor would this court allow you to question that? And I could not understand why not. That the court would take it to the zone that they and and Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams, that's where we run into our problem. There seems to me to be a lot you don't understand about how this would work. I can't, in good conscience, given what you've said today, um, come to the conclusion that. While your waiver might be unequivocal, at least at one point you equivocated on it, but even if I were to say that, I can't say that this waiver of counsel in this case is knowingly being made, is understandingly and intelligently being made. Um, I will say that I think to an extent, it's voluntary, but I think I need all of those characteristics to allow your waiver waiver to go forth, particularly on a charge such as this one of um, 
open murder. So without anything else, your request to represent yourself in this case, the court having been, having made the finding is denied. Ms. Woodson will represent you. Then I'd like to address the court to let the court know that this here is what you have stated before the court and it is final and that it will tell us all that the matter has been adjudicated here in your court that I will now take it to the United States Supreme Court. I'm going to go to the federal court to be charged with your denial and ask that the court provide me with a copy of your denial or I can address it as the matter has been adjudicated here before you you gave me leave to take it to a higher court. That's all I have. Your request in all of that, that I at least could garner, your request for a stay for leave to appeal my decision is denied. We will proceed today. Thank you, Your Honor. Swinton, you are prepared to go forward. Yes, sir. I may just have the two minute break. You want to talk to him? Oh, can we just have three preliminary matters before we take a quick break that I wanted sure. to ask about? You had witnesses here since 8 a.m. Um, they have asked me about what the schedule will be for, for the court today. Um, and uh, additionally, um, just for me, does the court wish me to question a bench or the, or the table or the, the podium or the table? And I'm going to ask for a mutual sequestration order with the exception of detectives Rajot, Iverson, and Special Agent Foss. All right. No objection, Your Honor. To the sequestration order? Okay. Witnesses are hereby ordered sequestered. As to scheduling, as my days go, I start out looking at it one way and then it turns into something else. I just because I think we have some we could probably release for a break early since we won't get to them probably Yes. And I. I don't know what order you're going to call them in. I do have something that I have to take care of between around 12 to 1230. And so I was looking to have the lunch at that point, try to take care of my mat other matters and then proceed into the afternoon. I will go as late as anybody wants to go. Um, the people in terms of the order that you're going to call the witnesses to the extent you want to put some want some of the witnesses to leave and then have them on call, the court's going to have given what's happened this morning, no objection to that whatsoever. Okay. Was that all three things? Podium or table, do you want me to question the witnesses? You can, with our fancy new system here, you can do either. You. So you. wherever you, wherever you are comfortable you. and when you're questioning, unless you feel comfortable, I'm I'm not going to require that you even stand when you're questioning. So I don't I don't have a problem with that. Okay. All right. And so you wanted to talk to him. Okay. So we'll take him back and let you have a private conversation. Court will stand in recess. All rise.